Hi, this is Regeline Sabat, also known as DP. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Angelica. Welcome to the show, Dr. Angelica. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. Now, why don't you start off by telling us about you and where you're from? Okay, well, I'm Angelica Underwood, Benavides Underwood, and I am from, I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas. And uh, I was born in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. So I'm um, I'm a Latina. <laughs> I love it. Now, can you tell us more about your book, From Zero to Success, Secrets of Master Entrepreneurs and International Speaker? Absolutely. Uh, this book was born because as an entrepreneur, and you know, as an entrepreneur, many times we're looking, we have so many puzzles to kind of put together, you know, the branding, the marketing, the big why, the passion, and and when you start building the business, it's like sometimes you have to hire different people and you get lost and you get discouraged so many times. So during the COVID, when everything was being shut down, I thought to myself, what do we do to reinvent ourselves, right? So I found 18 authors across the world that had different expertise so that we don't go looking all over the place and we have them in what platform, one book, you know, one place where they can get the big why, they can transform their lives, they can reinvent themselves. And these authors tell their story and how they started from chaos, found their business and their passion, and turned it into a business, a successful business. So right now it's in Spanish, but very soon we're gonna turn it and translate it into English. And it's a book that you must read. That is absolutely amazing. I'll definitely check it out and read it. Now, what is your vision for the book? My vision is that we um, that we reach a million people or more, entrepreneurs especially, that want to start a business. And yet, sometimes they just have that idea and it never crystallizes it. You know, I never transformed into anything. It's just an idea. And we want to be able to reach out to them and say, if you have an idea, we have the strategy on how to start from zero, from nothing, and how to begin to achieve the success that they want. But of course, they have to define success because you and I know that success means anything and everything to any everybody, right? And that's so right. that's, and that's where we start them with this book. We have the book and then it flows into a mini course where they're going to have a workbook and they're actually taking influential action. Like we influence them, we tell them, go do this now. And if they take action, they'll begin to see momentum and momentum builds success. From the, the mini course, then we go into a um, master class where they're going to have access to all the authors. We have one two amazing authors they're all amazing but two one is an amazing and famous writer from mexico that wrote uh, a lot of what we call telenovelas or, sh or soap operas and she is an author in our book her name is rosa salazar arena and then we have uh ragne Sinicas, who is the leader of women world uh world women conference and awards uh, founder so uh, we have amazing people in this book. Wow, that is incredible. Now, I'm a member as well of the World Women Conference and Awards, and I know oh, Rack is absolutely amazing. So it's definitely, <laughs> I, I recommend to the audience to check it out for sure. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. She talks about the the leader within, you know, because we all have that leader within that has to be born because a lot of times we become followers in the world and we tend to follow people because we feel that that's the norm or the right thing to do instead of really tapping into our own passion and our own desire and then bringing that leader out and then get other people to follow us, you know, and for us to really influence and impact and leave an imprint in the world, because at the end, we're going to leave. And when we leave this world, we want to leave a legacy behind, you know, that's, that's my mission. It's like, I want to leave a legacy behind where I transform people even after I'm gone. 
you know, I'm touching lives and I'm changing lives and, and I'm, and I'm bringing hope into hearts, you know, um, that's my dream and, and my, my purpose in life. That's very powerful. Thank you for sharing that, mm -hmm. Dr. Angelica. Now, tell us more about your show, Power Talk Show, Act the Expert live stream. Well, in this uh, Power Talk, Ask, Ask the Expert, you know, I invite different types of experts in different niche, you know, like either they're mindset experts, marketing experts, um, branding experts, and I bring them in to introduce them into the world. Because like I said, many times we're missing a certain piece of the puzzle in our life or in our business. So by introducing these experts to other people that are watching, then they're able to either have an aha moment during the live stream, or they can actually connect with these individuals. And I'm hoping that they would transform their lives one way or the other, right? Because I, 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 I'm never feared, like I don't fear competition. You know, it's not like, oh, somebody else is taking my business. To me, it's like, if, if I can't touch you, then I want to put someone close to you that will, you know? So that's why I created this Power Talk, uh, Ask the Expert, because I believe that I don't have all the answers and I don't plan on having all the answers, but I can find people that have the answers that will help others to make a difference, you know, so that they can become unstuck. I love it. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Now tell us more about some of the projects you're currently working on. Oh my goodness. I'm working on a lot of things. <laughs> it's like a multitasking, right? There's a lot going on in my life. I don't know about you, but it's like, I, you know, I ask and it's like you receive but sometimes I expect to receive it like in little steps or little like like drops of water. But sometimes right now I feel like it's pouring, you know, and everything's just like everything I wanted is manifesting. Um, right now I'm looking into we're we're buying and creating a business. This business already exists and it's very powerful. It's a spiritual business that really it's like a retreat where uh, people have an opportunity to go and tap within, you know, find out what beliefs do I have? What emotional, um, I want to call it, you know, a lot of times we have these emotions that hold us back because we're living in our past. So in this retreat center that we're kind of going to take over from this, hopefully from this other business or this other owner, it's really powerful strategies and uh, ways of helping people heal inside and out, right? And that's something that we're working on right now. In addition to we're, we're uh, creating um, a mini retreat called A Hope, or I'm sorry, A Bridge to Hope. And this one involves 12 speakers, and hopefully you're one of them. And it deals with people who have um, suffered in life and struggled in life, either through domestic violence or cancer. And then they're coming in and sharing to the world on how they were able to come out of that situation so that we can provide hope into these women or men, because men have cancer too, and that we can give them resources and we can give them uh, two days. It's going to be two days where they can actually come and they'll listen to the speakers and then we're gonna have processes where they can actually go through to be able to heal during these two days. And then we're hoping to get sponsors. So if there's anybody out there that is a sponsor, we want to get pillows and blankets and wigs or anything that we can give these cancer victims, you know, some, some supplies or some love, specifically and especially in December. So that's a big project that we have. And of course, we're still launching our zero to success book, you know, so it's a lot of work uh, that we're putting in to this big project. To me, it's a big project. So we have a lot happening right now. Um, but I'm just in love with life. And I think that we're creators, you know, and, and if you're not creating, then I think that's when your life just becomes very dull and boring and 
and and you feel like something's wrong, <laughs> right? That's right. So, yes, yeah. And that is incredible how you're bringing domestic violence survivors and also cancer survivors together on that panel. And I'm truly honored to be on your panel as well. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're gonna have the panel on October 24th and then the mini retreat would be in December. So like I said, there's a lot happening. And the reason that I combined it also is because this month is domestic violence and breast cancer, but I went through both. I had that breast cancer um, I'm, a, I'm a breast cancer survivor, and I'm also um, I also experienced domestic violence. It was a lot of verbal abuse, but it's still intellectual, um, intellectually draining, and it really stabs the spirit, you know, and it brings you down as a human being. So, uh, and I thought, you know what? I have to pay it forward. I have to find people that experienced it because I think it's about bringing hope. A lot of times when you're in the darkness, I'm gonna call it darkness, it's like you don't find, you can't see the way out. And it's not until you see other people or hear other people that have gone through it, then that you could relate. And I think sometimes as a uh, as human, you, we could hear it from somebody who didn't have the experience and it's not the same thing because in our head, it's like, well, you don't understand. <laughs> You're not going through it, right? As humans, we do that. But when we really experienced it and we tell our story and we tell people uh, the, the steps that we took to come out of that darkness, you know, and yeah, we suffered and we felt it and, and the whole thing was there because it's raw. It's raw. It's a raw experience. It still exists sometimes within us. But when we tell the story and we share it, I believe that we we continue to heal and we're going to help other people to heal. I'm, I'm going to go back to the inside and out because it's not just healing the body. It's really, I believe we have to also heal the soul, heal our mind, because there's a lot that happens in our life. That's right. Now, can you explain to the audience some of the tools that assisted you with overcoming domestic violence? Oh, my goodness. You know, uh, that was really tough. Um, I didn't, When you're in it, you don't even think you're in it. You know, you're experiencing it. But the whole time I was trying to save him. I was trying to help him come out of it and heal. And, and I think, honestly, I was trying to change him. I'm going to say, I'm going to use that. But that doesn't happen. You're not going to be able to change anybody if they don't want to change. The only person that can change is you. And I think that when I discovered that, and one of the tools that I use is that business that I'm talking about that I might transition into, where I started going to these retreats. And... I was able to do inner work to really find out my triggers, to really find out what was happening in, inside me and to give me the courage to step up and walk away because I kept wanting to save him. I kept wanting to change him. And I lasted, what, 11 years in the relationship. But when I actually took courage and, and took responsibility for my own being, I was able to walk out of it and say no more. And because not only do I suffer, but my children suffer through it too, you know, because they're there watching it and wondering why is my mom taking this and, or thinking is, is that okay? You know, because of the verbal abuse that's happening. That's right. Now, what are some of the red flags that you will warn the audience of? I think when you see the pattern, when it's repetition and people, you know, they, people can be mad at you, but it's not okay when they put you down constantly, right? And when they're um, blaming you for everything that's happening and accusing you of things. So I think that's not okay. And when you see that that pattern continues, and I feel that if you if you live a win-win model where you feel that people are building you and supporting you and motivating you, 
and you're doing the same for your partner, I think that's a healthy relationship where you could be, you could agree to disagree. But when you're in a relationship, when the person is either pointing the finger at you and screaming, because it was either a very sweet, sweet person, or it was like yelling, like if he, if he wanted to kill somebody, you know, and that's not okay. That's not okay because it can happen to anybody. And I, and I know that when people do bad things, things have happened within them, within their lives. So that's the part I wanted to heal. That's the part I wanted to rescue. But again, I couldn't right? I, I couldn't save the person. So it's, it was up to me to save myself and look after my kids and making sure that they weren't experiencing that. Because the screaming and the yelling and the cussing, I think those are things that you could look at. Uh, some people, uh, my niece has gone through the, the domestic violence as well. And uh, the choking is not okay. You know, when that happens and it, when it happens in front of kids, it's not okay. It's really time to walk because if they don't hurt you or I'm going to use the word kill because it's really scary that they can, some can intentionally kill you, but some unintentionally and unconsciously they're in the moment and not that they want to kill you, but they can kill you. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am because they're so angry and there's so much in their rage that it becomes scary, very scary. That's right. You know, I love how you raise awareness in regards to choking and strangulation because I myself went through that. I almost lost my life at the hands of someone else else. It would have been death by strangulation. So I truly appreciate you for bringing awareness in regards to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. And, and I think that, you know, I'm talking about my niece also in this moment because she experienced some of that abuse. And I'm thinking that maybe unconsciously she grew up thinking it was okay. So it's a repeated behavior. She saw it in, saw it in me because I raised her. And now she thinks it's okay. And it's happening to her. And I keep telling her it's not okay. And I'm sorry that you went through it because it, and, and I'm glad that we're bringing it up because there's a lot of women out there wanting to save their relationship because they, I don't know if they really love the person or they're afraid to leave the person, you know, or is it both? I don't know. Majority of the time it's both. And also it happens to men as well. I know a few men that, you know, went through domestic violence as well, where the women have abused them. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. And I've heard that, you know, uh, I, I know a person that was actually sleeping and, and the wife hit him with a bat on the head. It's like, and then they were there because, you know, they're still taking that. And it's like, oh my God, you're sleeping. They can kill you while you're asleep. Like, I don't know. It's a tough conversation, don't you think? Yes, ma'am. Yes, but I really appreciate you for raising awareness in regards to that and how you overcame it. Now, can you tell us more about your experience with cancer and how you overcame that as well, some of the tools you utilize. Absolutely. Uh, they found two types of cancer. Uh, one was what you call HERS2 positive, which is uh, hormonal. And I had 75% of my cells that were activated. Um, you know, cancer cells were activated. And uh, and then I had carcinoma in situ, which was in, in the local, in the breast, local cancer. So um, it was really tough. It was a tough moment. So I did a lot of things. I did Western medicine and I did uh, alternative medicine. So I always talk about you, everybody has their own medicine kit, you know, or they will add to their medicine kit. And it's okay to try anything and everything. And I just want to tell people that, you know, people would tell me because I have a lot of friends that are in the, in the alternative uh, natural remedies. And they would tell me, why are you getting chemo? You shouldn't be getting chemo. And they make you feel bad, right? They don't intend to make you feel bad, but they do. Or you have the Western medicine telling you, the doctors, well, why are you doing this? Don't be doing the alternative. It doesn't work. And 
But what I did, I just combined both, right? I, I combined both medicines. I did it because I felt that was the best thing for me. They said that somebody with that type of cancer would last five years without medication. And, you know, like I mentioned, um, well, I didn't mention it here, but one of my sons, the oldest, said, Mom, if you die, I'm going to be very mad. And when he said that, it really, really um, got my attention. I'm like, I don't want to die and for him to be mad, you know, and I'm dead and he's going to hold that resentment. I rather fight and do everything I can in my power to live because they were younger. The youngest was 11 and he was what 17 years old so it was tough it was tough having cancer um and um so i tried some of the medicine that i tried i tried weird stuff <laughs> you know i tried this cap it was like under like below zero and i would put it on my head so i wouldn't lose my hair um and it didn't work it didn't work but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it didn't work. What matters and what I tell people is that you try things. And if it doesn't work, then it's okay. You try something else. And if it doesn't work, you try something else until you find what works. And um, and one of the other things I did, they were like little animals, like little insects, you know, that my sister got from Mexico. And they're called gorgojos. And you, when you eat them, they create this enzyme. And that enzyme kills cancer, uh, according to the research over there in Mexico. So I did that. It was disgusting and yucky. So she would put them in capsules for me. And that made it really easy for me to get kind of, you know, take them. And um, I use something else called ozone therapy. So... Uh, for those of you that are interested in that, that's something that I feel really helped me. All the time I would get chemo, I would be gray and ashy, very ashy. I didn't, my energy level just dropped. And um, I lost a lot of strength in my legs. Um, but I would go get the ozone therapy and then it would, you know, I would get that pink color again and it gave me the energy to keep going and keep going. Um, the treatments are expensive, but you know, I did bingos, um, I did raffles, we made tamales, <laughs> we would sell things. So it's like, don't give up. Like you just have to be creative, you know? And then people came and supported me in so many ways. So yeah, it's expensive, but you find the way. You know, and one of the things that I did learn, it was hard for me to ask for help. It was so hard because I'm so independent. I'm on my own all the time. And, but it taught me to stop and ask for help because there was times I couldn't go to the hospital and get uh, the chemotherapy. I couldn't drive there. So then my coworkers started taking me to treatments. They would sit through chemo with me, but not until I asked. You know, because they found out that my son was only what, I think at that time he was 12 or 13. And I had to teach him how to drive because, you know, I didn't really have anybody else. The other one had to go to work. He was helping and supporting us. And I had to teach the little one. And then when they found out, they were like, let's help you. They would send meals and wheels to my house so I didn't have to cook. So, God, you know, it was hard. It was the hardest thing, but you have to ask for help. You know, I think that's what really turned my life around when I started asking. And even if I was going through the crisis, it just made it a lot of, you know, a little easier for me. Wow. You are truly a warrior. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Now, was there a time in your journey where you experienced an aha moment? Oh, my goodness. I did because during that time that I had cancer, it was like my aha moment. I discovered that I had a lot of broken promises I had made my made to myself. I had been working on my doctorates and going to school forever, you know, because I'm a seeker and, and always looking, trying to find out and know more and more. 
And during that time, I would say, okay, when I finish my bachelor's, I'll go travel. When I finish my master's, I'll go travel. When I do this, I'll do that, you know? And I never did it. So I, I discovered I had a lot of broken promises that I had made to myself. And one of them was traveling and writing a book and doing daring things, you know? So now anything I want, I just do it. So I wrote a book with 18 authors. I'm ready to write some other ones. I'm opening up my own publishing company. Um, I mentor, I'm traveling. Well, I'm not traveling because of COVID, but I have traveled to Thailand and Hong Kong and you name it. I've gone to a lot of places and I've done daring things, you know, like I, I love tigers and I love white tigers. So I've always thought like, if I could just cuddle up with a white tiger. Well, I did. I went into the cage when I went to Thailand. I was scared to death, <laughs> but I did it. I still did it. And I think we all feel that way when we're ready to do something that we really want, even opening up our new business, uh, changing jobs. We, we're scared to death, but I just have to say, you have to do it. Just do it. You know? That is incredible. Now you talk about how you did it, but how did you shift your mindset to overcome fear to do it, to go and see the tiger? I, I mean, I was trembling when I went in. I told the guys he could eat me, you know, so I'm still, <laughs> I'm, I'm walking into the cage and he's like, you have to relax because they smell fear. I'm like, are you sure? You know? <laughs> So yeah, I'm trembling. I'm walking in there, and and uh, and he's like, just sit in the back. And they give you instructions: never get in front of the face because they'll scratch you, and uh, but always be behind them. So I was at their tail. I laid on him and petted him, and then I think it was not even five minutes. I was like, I'm good. <laughs> My wish was set, <laughs> and I walked out of there, and that was it. You know. I so, love it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, even when we were at the speaking engagement this weekend, they had that big uh, python, that snake, you know? So I was scared of it too. And you'll see one of my pictures on Facebook where I'm like, but I still had, I said, as long as you hold the head, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so they put it around my neck and you do it with fear. Like you do things with fear, but you, do it. And then at the end, it was like, it could have still choked me, you know? <laughs> but you still do it. And at the end, it's an experience because life, that's all life is. It's an experience, you know? And then you can laugh about it just like we are right now. We like, you laugh about those moments, you giggle or you cry, but life is an experience. That's all it is. So what do you choose to live? You know? Just a boring life, just sitting there hoping and wishing and nothing? Or do you want to go laugh and say, I was scared to death? You know, I climbed 30 feet above to do an obstacle course when I wanted to write my dissertation because I couldn't get unstuck. And I went and I walked. I cried my whole way across that obstacle course. And I, I told them, please don't get me down when I'm up there asking for help. Well, they wouldn't. And I was like, oh, it's just kidding. Like, bring me down. And they're like, no, keep walking. No. And I cried and cried. But then when I look at the pictures, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I've, I've discovered I have a lot of fears. You know, I'm afraid of heights. I had no idea I was afraid of heights. Um, it's like you discover. It's like a self-discovery. The more you do things, it's like you discover, like, I was afraid or or I stumbled, or I could have done better, or I could do this differently. It's like, a, you're just discovering more about what you can do, what you don't like, what you want to do more of, you know? So it's fun when, when you really live to your full potential, you know, which is what I think I'm doing. Uh, I speak, I speak up more. I was very shy, very timid. And now if I don't like something or I disagree, I tell people I disagree and it's okay. I'm not arguing with them. Some do see that you're arguing with them, but, but it feels good in my body. 
to speak up and stand up, you know? It feels good. So there's three main things that I do now. I, I, I look for choice. I look for my voice. And I take action. You know? And, and those are the three things that I live by. So I think that everybody should practice. It's hard. It's not easy. But it's possible. You can do it. Just look for choice. You don't like it? find something else. You don't like it, find something different and then voice it. Ask for help, ask for guidance. Coaches, mentors are really, really important in life. Teachers are important in life. You're, you need to create a support group, group around you because there's times that you will need them, you know, and then just voice, you know, just speak up all the time. And take actions all the time, like something different. So that's right. Action truly matters in mindset. Now, can you explain to the audience how important it is to shift their mindset from a negative mindset to a positive mindset and to maintain a positive mindset? It's really hard, uh, especially when there's a lot of anxiety and stress in, in the body. So, one of the practices that I do is that I meditate a lot, you know. Um, in the morning or at night or whenever I'm going through something that I cannot deal with, you know, that I'm having a hard time dealing with, I just sit and I observe. That's it. I close my eyes. I'll put some meditation music and I begin to observe, you know, what's tightening up in my body, what's um, tingling, if there's a hot sensation in my body, like just looking for the emotions in my body. You know, I do a lot of inner work. So I discover what am I feeling? What am I thinking? What are the beliefs that are coming out? What's really bothering me? And then I observe and I let go, you know, through using the breath. There's a breathing exercise that I do and that I teach in some of these um, uh, programs that I have. So it's being able to breathe and sit. And when you begin to sit and, and just listen to what's really happening inside, then you have to ask yourself, is that really true, right? Because sometimes we have beliefs that are not true. They're beliefs of a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old. And when you really think about it and observe that worry that you have, you can tell that inner child, which is you, and you tell that child, it's okay. You know, I'm 30 years old now. I can, I can really speak up and stand up. It's going to be okay. You know, I can make this decision and, and you begin to do this inner dialogue. And then sometimes you just let go. And I really like going to a place that's nowhere, you know, just clearing the mind completely where you feel that you're asleep, but yet you're not. I don't know how to explain that one. But you are in this space where you can just create and you can ask anything you desire, you know. That's right. Getting quiet truly really matters. Now we have two guests that said hello here, Justin Crane and Andrea Rojas. <laughs> hello. Ah. <laughs> hello, Andrea and Justin. Yes. Uh, Justin was actually at the event in San Antonio, Texas here. Oh, really? What did you say, sir? Justin Crane. He was at the Oh, event. okay. Okay. Yes. Hey, so now, Justin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, can you tell us more about what gives you joy in your life? My kids. <laughs> my kids give me joy. And uh, my nephews, they give me joy. I don't have my parents anymore, but all the time I think of them, they give me joy. And whenever I see any any person that, that I'm working with, when they're achieving what I consider success or they consider success when they achieve that milestone. It that's when I feel like it's joy. I love water. I love the sun. So if I'm by the water and the sun, I could just be there and just kind of like just take that space of of I don't know how to explain that. It's it's not joy. It's just the sensation of peace and relaxation. You know. So I look for those moments. That is beautiful. I love it. Now, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? They have to see what is it that 
they're passionate about? What is it that they're constantly talking about? What are they interested in? What were they pretending to be when they were four or five years old? You know, tap into that energy, tap into that energy, bring it in. And a lot of people have lost those dreams and that passion because they've been told um, unconscious, you know, a lot of parents, they don't tend to be negative, but they're like, be quiet, shut up, sit down, don't do this, don't do that. And then it's like, we begin to be programmed to ask for permission. So I'm giving you permission right now. Just go do whatever makes you happy, you know, go do it. <laughs> you know, if you want to be a mechanic, be a mechanic. If you want to create dolls, create dolls. If you want to cook on YouTube, go cook on YouTube. Like you can recreate and invent, reinvent yourself and who you want to be like right now. So go do it. Cause a lot of times we need permission. So we give you permission today. <laughs> <laughs> Very powerful. I love it. Um, and, and Angelica, thank you so much for being a guest on walk with me podcast. Now, where can the audience find you? Well, they can go on LinkedIn and I think you posted everything there. Facebook. I know I have a lot of friends, but send me a message. And if somebody's not being active, I can delete them. Um, and then you'll see a lot of my links out there. And then uh, we'll post one in your comments if you have one here um, where you can kind of link. And if you want to talk, we can connect and we can talk that way. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Dr. Angelica at LinkedIn at Dr. Angelica Underwood. And Dr. Angelica, thank you so much for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye.